Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues. A couple of years ago on this channel, I played a sub-mod for the Old World Blues overhaul mod. It was called Enclave Reborn. It was actually one of the first times you could play as the Enclave within this overhaul mod. Obviously, since then, they've added some more content. Now you can play as them as MacArthur, but nonetheless, it was a really, really fun mod at the time. Unfortunately, about a year ago, the original developer dropped the mod. It was no longer being developed. Since then, it has been picked back up with a new banner. It is called Enclave Reborn Redux. And I've heard nothing but really good things. People saying, you took an already phenomenal mod and made it even better. They say it is clearly a work of love and tremendously fun to play. I've had a lot of requests on the Discord to give it a go. So, all right, color me intrigued. I would like to know what is different. I've certainly had a lot of fun with these guys in the past. I've actually played as the Enclave kind of a few times on the channel at this point. You could almost say that I'm an Enclave man, and I accept this. Still, let's go ahead and get started. Now, of course, in this mod, we play as a tiny little faction over here next to New Reno and the NCR. I'm curious how this is going to interact with the MacArthur area. Here it is. These guys right here are also the official Enclave faction, but it's fine. We'll play as these guys. Let's just kind of see what's going to happen. No Iron Man mode, for God's sake. Now, obviously, as I said, it's been a very long time since I played the original mod. If I recall correctly, a huge part of the early game is going to be trying to expand our economy and our territory without letting the NCR know that this little piece of territory is actually ruled by the Enclave, because once they figure that out, they're going to come gunning for you. So we'll see what happens. We remember Navarro, all right, the last bastion of freedom. That is going to be our first focus. We do start off with, it looks like, some basic Enclave auxiliaries and, of course, some power armor. And if there's anything that the Enclave is going to be good at, it is the freaking power armor. Oh, yeah. We also should consider getting ourselves probably... I can't get any workshops. Okay, forget that. Uh, we'll go ahead and just build out a little bit of infrastructure or something, I guess. As far as military factories, we're producing absolutely nothing. I've got two factories to speak of. Well, that sucks. All right, we'll get some basic energy rifles and... I would say probably the power armor, but we don't even have any advanced components or anything along those lines either. So honestly, I think I just put both factories there and just kind of say that's it. That's all we can do until we have a chance to expand. I believe we are going to have not quite full access, actually, to all the advanced stuff. I thought we were going to have advanced, like, vehicles, robotics, and so on, but no. We will have advanced infantry support and, of course, power armor. And I'll bet you there's a way to get things like advanced aircraft so we can get the vertebrates and everything else... But for now, that's what we've got to work with. I think we're also supposed to, like, reform, maybe? Or maybe not reform. We have to, like, choose whether we want to go for a purist enclave path, original to the uh, authoritarian vision, or if we want to become more democratic in nature, or something along those lines. That is a thing we're supposed to do. So the early game is definitely all about trying to snowball. If you can, all will be well. If you cannot, well, good freaking luck, the NCR is probably gonna kill ya. There's actually not a lot that I need to research right now. Wouldn't mind being able to get some basic convoys, which is going to be trains. I also wouldn't mind trying to go down a motorized route this game. Because traditionally, these kind of power armor brotherhood or enclave style of factions have very serious manpower issues through most of the game. And uh, the thing is, if you have the right equipment, that's not necessarily a big deal. Like, 2,000 men can easily kill, like, 50,000. But you got to have the right equipment, which means good industry... Uh, and you really don't want to be fielding too much regular infantry. You need that defense and hardness. So I'm kind of wondering if power armor plus mechanized is going to be the way to go for this particular game. We will see. All right, let's go ahead and bump forward at speed five, as we often do, and start working toward these events. Do I want to play on hard mode? <laughs> yeah, so um, there, there, is, there is things you can do with this. Um, you can play with super hard mode, or just like regular hard mode, or it's a Nevada run. I don't even know what this is supposed to mean. But yeah, no, we're not going to do this. What this does is, if I recall correctly, it increases the difficulty of your opponents to like 150% extra attack and defense and stuff. Like, even in your power armor, they will cause serious problems. You have to basically cheese the AI in a lot of ways. I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm just going to say that I like my power trip. 
So we're gonna stick with that. In the lair of the bear. We are on the very borders of the NCR, a rogue nation occupying American soil. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if they became fully aware of our existence. Luckily for us, the bear is blind. Weakened by bureaucracy, infighting, and an inf effectual leader with the right efforts made, we can hide under their very nose of the NCR until we are strong enough to reveal our plans. But we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will become harder and harder to conceal ourselves as time goes on. Yeah, we're gonna have to hide our activities from the NCR, and that's going to cost us a lot of political power. Also, looks like there's a bribe option. Interesting. That, I don't think, was a part of the original mod. So we can spend political power, or we could stock up on bottle caps and just bribe them, and that's another way of getting the suspicion to go down. I like that. Okay. The last bastion of freedom! When the rig was destroyed, the hope of America laid at Navarro, and the Brotherhood and NCR saw to it that the American dream was to be snuffed out. With many standing on the edge of despair, the toughest soldier of the Enclave, Sergeant Major Dornan, rallied what few troops he could and... Fought his way out with power armor. We get three new Enclave veteran uh, divisions. Or gain power or manpower. Or get flying aces and transports and gunships. See, this is really good. Because this would allow me to do some pretty nasty para-drop actions with power armor. I like the idea of getting the Enclave divisions, but I'm going to take the Vertibirds. I think we do that. I think we do that. We take the Vertibirds so that I have para-drop as an option to take out my weak neighbors. All right, old soldiers will never die. For years, Dornan, under the name Chad Ranner, hid among Vault City security. Many within his old unit settled there as well, growing the population considerably. For a time, it was peaceful, though by no means idyllic. Word out of the NCR saw rangers and military police rounding up former Enclave citizens who also tried to integrate. During one caravan security run to Sac City, Dornan watched as a mother and father were hanged for their association with the Enclave. Not even the children were spared. And that's how you know the NCR is exactly as evil as the Enclave. We've got moral justification on our side, ladies and gentlemen. It took every ounce of discipline to not open fire right then and there. Vault City bureaucracy kept the NCR at bay, but that was only for so long. Then one night, there was a knock at the old sergeant's door, and he was greeted by the steely eyes of the NCR Rangers. They'd come looking for him and spoke to him by name. It was an intense fight, but by the end of it, there were two dead NCR Rangers, and Dornan knew his time was up. Never send more ons, gain command power, political power, okay, or we get some extra power armor. Ooh, um, mm, 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 You know, a lot of extra power armor is nice, but I'm gonna take the political power because I think that we're gonna want some early reforms to jumpstart our economy. At the height of the Enclave's power, Dornan had the distinct privilege of leading his own unit, something unheard of, being he was non-commissioned officer. However, Dornan's rangers ranked aside the Devil's Brigade and Granite Company in terms of effectiveness when Navarro fell, they of course rallied behind the most feared and respected man in the Enclave. Yet as time wore on and the dream of America flickered out, they moved on, though many set, uh, settled in Vault City. When Dornan arrived at the house of a second in command, fists bloody from the encounter, they all knew they were no longer safe. The two went door to door knowing the hour was coming. That night saw an exodus, Dornan doing his last act as Chad Ranner to get them through. They made their way to an abandoned pre-war base off near New Reno. It was long abandoned and few actually knew of its exact location, but Dornan did, as the family settled the pre-war bases, only one thing was on their mind. Are they ready for revenge? Or they want a future for their children? Again, more political power, or we could get some stability and war support, which we are lacking very dramatically. So I do want to get both of these. I think I'll split the difference and say I'm ready for revenge. Well, okay, here's the thing. I'm actually thinking that if there's a choice between going down the purist and the reformist route, I might go for a reformed enclave this time. Which means, maybe for roleplay purposes aside, I should try to be kind of positive, forward-thinking, maybe even, dare I say, progressive? That's a thought. All right, we want a future for our children. We're just trying to live, all right? Live and let live. That's all we care about. All right, so let's go for the sons and daughters of Liberty. And maybe we should go ahead and get Joshua Morgan, a corrupt sycophant, as an advisor. 
I hate the consumer goods, but 15% extra political power is good, especially at a time when I already don't really have any factories to spend, so like, who cares, I say. Let's just go for it. All right. A new generation of Americans. Why is there an apostrophe there? I don't know. Time, however, had marched on. Dornan's cropped black hair had turned solver white and even his best officers grew weary with age. Yet among their numbers were not a series of old Enclave, but a new generation, sired by the Enclave of old. Many were taught the basics of survival, others taught how to be soldiers. Many of the older ones here tonight were rangers, and they had taught their children well. They had come of age being taught of the Enclave of America and their heritage. Dornan thought back to the child hanging beside his parents, then looked to the families huddling around the center of the depot. Even if a few said the Enclave was dead or the American dream was gone, they weren't going to give up. Not this time. All right, for they are the Enclave's future or the America's future. See, okay, if I'm going for a reformer route, I'm pretty sure I don't want to go down the elite. I want to go for electual. Yeah, that's what we're going for. So we're going to go for the intellectuals. They are American futures. Yes, now we are calling all Enclave. Using old codes and working endlessly to get the radio running, the refugees from Vault City began broadcasting from afar. The encrypted channel would be hidden from prying ears like the NCR and secured from those who knew how, like the Brotherhood. Soon others began arriving, some from the north, the east, and even a few out of California. A month in, a series of vertebrates arrived, having come with from Bloomfield Space Center in California. Among them was Franklin Anderson, a well-respected scientist in his time and a brilliant orator who managed to rally many within the depot to the old purist cause. While others chafed under the words, no one could argue it played to the Enclave's desire for revenge. Not long after, a separate group arrived from Oregon, a famous mercenary war band known as Granite Company, who historically was one of the greatest units in the Enclave. While Granite Sr. had passed away not long ago, his son, Douglas Granite, had taken over, and where Anderson made fiery retorts of vengeance for the purity of America, Granite made impassioned speeches to counter talking about reform and of a new beginning. Night after night, they continued and soon came to a head when it was suggested that the depot hold a vote. All right, command power or political power. Uh, well, I would rather take the political power if I had to choose. Never let the old flag fall. Despite all that's happened in the last few months, the Enclave remnants are scattered far and across the American continent. From MacArthur to Chicago to possibly even Texas and beyond, Dornan came to Sierra Depot for a reason. To create a stable base far from prying eyes and prepare for the future. Now with what he has, what with the Anderson and Granite have, they can accomplish just that. It will be hard and difficult, but that never stopped America before. America will rise! America will go on! The rig may have gone down, the families hunted like rats in sewers, but the wasteland should learn. It's not so easy to take out America like that. Not by a long shot. All right, so we can get a lot more political power and enclave survivors from past ex expeditions afar arrive to join or get more transports and gunships. I already got that, so I guess I'll take some survivors. That I'll does give me here. a few extra units. Okay, that kind of worked out fine. So we can go for Better Call Sal, right, which is our old allies. Never forget the past for some stability and such and add technology and military heritage. Or we can choose our choice. All right, let's start with never forget our past and stuff. We want to work down all of those. I've got a fair bit of political power at the moment. We do need to hide our activities from the NCR. In 29 days, this will be a thing. Is there anything I want to spend my political power on that would really help me right now? Um, no, not especially. War support, weekly stability, blah, blah, blah. I think I'd rather just continue getting some advisors and stuff. Uh, we can get some veterans. I do want to go for reorganized uh, men to get some more manpower. That's going to be important eventually. But is it critical right this second? No. I'm going to go for the reformer and start building up some reformer faction power. We're currently in the majority, but let's make that as powerful as possible. Yeah, I'll go for the reorganized remnants after all. Let's just do that. And for the economy... Hmm, I guess a technocrat could be all right. Research speed, I don't want the elite support, so that's not going to be a thing. Um, I guess we'll go for the technocrat. All right, the extra research speed and stuff has to eventually pay off. Yeah, it sucks to lose a little bit of Cap's income, but as I eventually start conquering all my neighbors, and that is going to happen, we'll get there regardless. Let's call in Sal. Question, what just happened with the military heritage? Did we get anything over here? We did not. 
Where do I find? There it is. All right. Uh, unlocks access to the military heritage technologies located in the top right of the infantry technology window. Hello. So that's going to be up over here. Perfect. All right. Past victories. Organization reinforce rate. And that gets better and better until we have extra soft attack, heart attack, and piercing for everybody. I like that. I like that a lot. And of course, we do, of course, have our APA power armor. That's going to be really nice. I will want to get the Mark II, but that's not available for about 12 years. Hermes army uh, armor looks suspiciously similar, but I don't think it is exactly what I'm going to get. I want to continue getting some other things here, though. Right? Mass drivers, plasma rifles, all of that would be cool. But sure, I guess just, like, straight-up passive upgrades for all troops is pretty good. All right, our old allies. Before the rig's destruction, we contracted with one of the new Reno crime families, the Salvatores, trading drugs for weapons. While it was time-honored tradition, that family had been kicked out of new Reno due to their plot being uncovered. Even plasma rifles can't stop a mob of angry thugs and mob enforcers. We can let them in, muzzle them, apparently, gain some manpower, a research slot, suspicion goes down... All right, or keep them underground, we get 2% research power. See, I have to feel like the research slot is objectively better. Some suspicion loss apparently will be wasted regardless. That is unfortunate, but I don't have a choice. I, I like 2% research, but I have to feel like the research slot is always going to be the better thing in the long run. So let's go ahead and pick that sucker up now. We must make a choice. The faction is trying to grow in power, but the purists are also growing a little bit in power. It's going up by 0.05 as opposed to the reformer faction's not going up at all. I don't know. The longer this takes, the harder this is going to be. Let's go for refined warfare because that seems to be what we always play in Old World Blues because let's admit it, I am a sucker for the power armor, but there we go. Our Presidente. Sergeant Dornan is well respected by both the reformer and purist faction within the Enclave. Nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president and have uh, presented their own candidates. The purists have selected Franklin Anderson, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. It appears the purist faction has the advantage, but the support of the Sarge could still tip the scales. All right, uh, we can go for um, Dr. Anderson and the reformer faction because the Enclave president. Dornan decides Dr. Anderson is a moron. Yeah, let's go for it. All right, so we are officially going to be reformists. Perfect. The reformer faction gains a slight advantage. We are led by Granite, who has absolutely no buffs whatsoever. That sucks. All right. Political infighting, by the way, is still absolutely crushing my national spirits. We do have the Enclave scientists giving us... Ah, there's the elite support. All right. Well, that's going to be a thing I have to counter for forever, but the 10% research slot uh, is going to be nice. Uh, extra special forces means more power armor, and we are not likely to surrender anytime soon. Fun. Our president. Notice, by the way, that we seem to have some new options appearing for our national focus tree. Looking forward to finding out what's going to happen there. Do I want a research advisor? I kind of like the idea of going for the land doctrine research speed early on plus the army experience. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll pick him up early, and that means that we should be able to get through our doctrines a little bit faster. And Refined Warfare does end up being really good, don't get me wrong. Sins of the Father. Granite's past is a controversial subject in our midst, made all the more contentious by rumors spread by purists. The cause is Granite's father and his relationship to the Chosen One. The purists accuse Granite's father of treason for aiding the Chosen One and destroying the oil rig. This is like the events of Fallout 2, right? I never played it. But I'm pretty sure that might be the case. Anyway, that's like where the Enclave even originates, if I recall correctly. All right, anyway, the purist secures Grant's father of aiding him, destroying the oil rig, but lack any evidence. Despite the fact that he will deny these allegations is nothing but political slander, Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about that fateful day on the oil rig. He did aid them, which could give us some mutant sympathies and 2% non-core manpower, which could be good. Or, uh, let me tell you who your mother was. Oh my, scandal. Um... I don't know why this would be better, because it just kills my, uh, my stability for no reason. Or he didn't, and we get some extra stuff. I'm going to take the non-core manpower. It's really good. After traveling around with his son for a brief few years, Granite Sr. established contact with one of the Enclave's civilian vaults, set up as a contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it. Since President Dick Richard had lifted child-rearing restrictions, the vault's population had exploded. Nonetheless, it was a safer place for a child than the wasteland. Thus, Douglas spent most of his youth in the safety of of the vault. Like most children in the Enclave's vaults, Granite was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. 
Sadly, nearly 200 years of Enclave propaganda and living in a vault run under a command economy meant that he and most other members of the Enclave were left with a vague understanding of what communism even was. As such, Granite knew all enemies of America must be communist or spent history class by playing on his Pip-Boy. Hmm, okay. Uh, well, hmm. Hatred of communism will play a role in future events and is necessary to unlock the anti-communist propaganda. I think this could be fun. We're gonna say everyone's a communist. This is, this is the classic American solution, all right? We don't like these people. They're going against my agenda. They must be a commie. It makes sense. Also, it does also make sense that we are going to have, uh, you know, problems with China and stuff. And I believe in this Redux mod that there are some additional uh, events and stuff that have to go on with discovering the fate of China and so on. So, like, this could play a role. I'm just saying. When Douglas was 17 years old, the population of the Enclave Vault reached the upper limits of its life support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the Vault to establish contact with the largest group of Enclave remnants, led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. I'm just gonna skip through the rest of this because there was an emergency distress signal. We can fight some NCR battalions. We can fight Brotherhood Knights. We could fight Kaisar's scouts. I'm gonna say Brotherhood Knights, because they're fun. When Douglas arrived with his team, the situation the defenders had grown more dire. Their battered defenses crumbling quickly under a determined but almost equally bloodied raider gang. Looking over the sad state of the parties, he decided to wipe them out! Become ruthless! Justify Wargle time reduction is nice. Mm -hmm. Or help take down the raiders and we're good at improving relations and getting compliance. Also, connection with a faction that gets me some research speed. Ooh. I like these both for different reasons. I'm gonna go with Charismatic for fun and for RP, but that extra compliance gain could be very helpful later on. You don't underestimate it. Uh, Granite always felt at home there, never quite knew why, blah, blah, blah. Where did they get their power armor and training? When the signal from CR Army Depot was intercepted, he and Granite Company made the trek to Nevada. Before they left, they made sure to salvage weapons or brought along friends and family and get more popularity of the intellectuals. I like political stability, it's kind of important. All right, we have to go down the reform route, so there we go. It's mutually exclusive, that's fine. How are my logistics at the moment? Yeah, we've got nothing. I was gonna say, can we train some more units? But the answer is no. Operational security compromised. Oh, right, I forgot. We were supposed to, we were supposed to hide, hide this stuff. Um, all right, hide activities, cease mercenary expeditions, resource extraction, cease construction efforts. We can do something in order to try and avoid this. We're gonna cease mercenary expeditions? No, we're just gonna go ahead and spend a little bit of political power. That's fine, not a big deal. So we've hidden our events, our activities, and for 90 days, this should be more or less safe, and we'll be okay. Though we should see eventually the cost is gonna start going up as time goes on. So yeah, I meant to do that earlier, not a big deal, totally fine. Um, we still get the pop-up as an opportunity to go ahead and just kind of cover up our, our activities a little bit over here. I know, by the way, that the first event here is pretty much just going to be me talking, like, a lot and reading through lore and background. I think it's important that we spend the time to actually properly enjoy these mods, though, right? There's a lot of really cool stuff to explore, so I think that we really ought to give this mod the attention it deserves. Also, apparently the developer added, like, a hundred something extra events, or maybe it was more than that, I don't know. Anyway, okay, we have a lot of problems, um, because reform apparently is a, a bit of an issue. <laughs> the reformer faction of the Enclave has never had it easy. First and foremost, many of our better natures often led them to des desert the Enclave the first chance they got, or do whatever they could to resist the terrible actions they were forced to commit. What's more, those who remained often had to keep their heads down due to the machinations of President Richardson. How his hubris bit him hard in the end, with many reformers banished to the mainland taking up many of the survivors while the hardline leadership went down with the rig. However, both are at odds for the future of the Enclave. The younger generation, having grown up outside the insular culture of the rig, have a more open view of the world around them, nurtured by the course by their parents. However, many are beholden to their parents and are unsure of the future, given they were forced to flee their homes for no crime, aside from being alive. As Granite addressed the assembly, he could feel the uncertainty within the room. Today, Today is the beginning of a new era, and many of you entrusted that to me. Among the series of events in my life, nothing could have filled me with greater anxiety than what you have given me today. On the one hand, I was summoned by my country, I attest I barely know, whose voice I could never hear until now. My fellow Americans, I hear you. I am but your humble servant. I will put down my Gatling laser and take up the oath of office you good people have all seen fit to hand me. We will enter this new world with fire in our eyes and pride in our hearts. God bless the Enclave. Its people and its future is objectively better because I care more about political power than I care about getting the command power. 
legitimacy tutorial. So we now need to persuade everyone, including non-enclave people, that we are the legitimate government of America and they should willingly join with us. That's interesting. All right. Now, here's the thing. Losing 5% legitimacy doesn't seem important right now because I would just gain political power and some more support. Or we can just get a head start over here. I'll, I'll do it. I'll keep that in mind. I'm not. I'm going to roleplay this a little bit. I'll keep it in mind. Let's gain some legitimacy. So what does this do? Uh, at the moment, nothing. Okay, well, that's good. All right, fine. Traitors among our scientists. Crap. All right, this hurts a lot of things and boosts the elites a little bit. Uh, traitors in the officer corps. Crap. Well, this is going to hurt things a little bit. Complaints about rations. The abundance of non-spoilable military rations scattered across the abundance of the USA has always been of vital importance to the Enclave. Basically, people are just sick of having Russian cheese every day. Ban it for war support? No, deal with it. You need food, fools! You need food! Why are, I don't care if Russian cheese is disgusting. I agree, but come on! All right, presidential victory speech. We can gain some stability and some political power. How are we gonna deal with the traitors in our midst? That's the question. All right, we got the presidential speech done. We could revo uh, provoke the purists, or we could reach out to centrists. That seems like a good plan. I'm gonna reach out to the centrists again for the good guy role play a little bit. Look, we're gonna make the Enclave what it could be, all right? I played as the brutal Enclave, and it's fun. But we're going to be playing as the good guy Enclave and see what we can do. Let's go for that early mobilization, get that built up. And I guess we'll just go ahead and give up some bottle caps because I'll be honest, I don't really care about bottle caps right now. Not too important. Uh, let's see. Last night, some traitors made off of the vertebrate and almost all of our old military codes. Hmm. Blame the purists? It probably is their fault, to be honest. Yeah, I now got justification if I want to do some crackdowns. Could do that, lose manpower, stability, and the popularity of the elites goes down. Basically, we just execute uh, one of our lieutenants. I'm not really looking to do that. All right, questions about the NCR. It appears the purists have been spreading the rumor that we are looking to compromise with the NCR. Some have even dared to suggest we would surrender. Purists, moderates, and even many reformers have absolutely no intention of letting bygones be bygones. What do we do with them? No, I definitely do not intend on actually compromising with the NCR. We will make that promise. I will I will fight them, eventually. Now we have questions about mutants, though. While we have made progress in introducing the idea of outsiders as something else than target practice, many are still unsure about our intentions toward the mutants. No in uh, integration, or what about them? This one I'm going to allow. What about the ghouls, though? Some have raised the question about whether we should integrate ghouls. On the one hand, many of the ghouls we've come across are feral monsters, but some knew pre-war America and perversely are more American than many of the Wastelanders. Um, let me explain the difference. I'm going to leave my options open here. I might decide that I want to go for a very progressive society, and we're not going to have the original sin of America of a racism and such, right? Slavery was a blot on our history, and then we continued it for way too long with this separate but equal doctrine. We're changing things here, dang it. Questions about the Brotherhood of Steel. While not as hated, they played a major role in the destruction of Navarro and the loss of many of our comrades. We could say we'll never ally with them. I could agree with that. Or they could be pitted against the NCR. See, that still is useful though. Do this. I could promise not to ally. I don't really intend on allying. However, if we find an event where we can do a coordinated assault against the NCR with their help, Maybe that would be worth stonks bull market or maybe it's a bear. I don't know the difference between them I know the difference. All right. Don't comment at me. I know I'm Just saying it's a joke in the game. Anyway. Hey, we just created an agency called the sneaky bastards <laughs> All right, there we go. We've consolidated our power tensions have been high since the election It appears support for the purists has only intensified as a result especially in the upper echelons to address the situation We've collected all those with grievances toward the new US government into one room Somebody hand me my speech or my fellow Americans because I'm charismatic Perfect we do that and I'm gonna get a lot of extra popularity. We are now at to 61% Aha! Take that purists. We could go for the city of crime yeah, sure. Annex war goal against whoever controls New Reno. War? Me likey war? I like war. Let's get ready for war. All right, we now have a war goal to use against New Reno. Infiltrate the NCR, reduce their suspicion. Currently only at 10, so not worth. And nothing else I can do? 
Purge the opposition. Uh, we would need to assassinate Dr. Anderson. If you're telling me that the only way I can continue down most of my focus tree is to assassinate the guy, then I guess I don't have a lot of choice. Well, let's go ahead and modify the treacherous scientists. That sucks. Um, we'll do that, and then we'll also go ahead and demote these guys. There we go. I wish there was an alternative, right? Like, get rid of all of the support for the purest faction, get it down to 0%, and this automatically is complete. That'd be kind of fun. I'd also love to go ahead and conquer New Reno now, while we can. And I don't think there's much you guys are going to be able to do about it, because I've got really good stuff. Major General Grimm speaks out in favor of Anderson. They are entitled to their opinion, or we could speak to them. There's a chance that he loses his purest trait, because we're charismatic. Let's give it a go. All right, he's unconvinced. Dang, that hurt. 10% loss. Anderson holds a speech. Wow, okay, Anderson's really going for it here. Um, I've lost a lot of support all of a sudden, but still not enough to lose, so we'll have to keep fighting these guys for a bit, at least until Anderson has been assassinated, since it certainly seems like he is intent on causing problems. Anyway, I don't actually anticipate having too many problems with New Reno. We should be able to deal with them pretty effectively. Can I just walk in here to like Carson City? We'll take over New Reno as the capital. That is now down. Perfect. Go to the stables. We can just make it to Carson City, which we did. And there we go. We took practically no losses. I'm gonna take all of your territory. And that's gonna have to be good enough, I guess. The officers have been purged. Now I need to burn their support by even more, huh? You're telling me I need to do a crackdown and stuff, huh? Oh, gosh. All right. Um, yeah, that's going to be difficult. Arrange some disappearances. Lose stability. Reduce their stuff there. Yeah, military... You know, military exercises are a good option. Let's do that. That boosts things a little bit more. But yeah, we need to get their uh, popularity down by a lot. It is going down. Just not enough. All right. Well, I do think that this is where we have to end this video, unfortunately, because I am out of time. But you can see that we do kind of have our work cut out for us. Can I maybe do something where I can fully annex this territory and core it? Yes. All right. So we need to start making some consolidations with the families of New Reno. Once done with that, we should be able to core all this territory, and that's going to make me a lot stronger. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're looking forward to this series of Enclave Reborn Redux. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.